situation, economic downturns, uh, a lot of students, they are looking for the alternative. So what is the possibility besides, uh, besides going for this, uh, the full force of professional field? So this is a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, a lot of questions by our students. So people are trying to, I mean, we are thinking of what are the options uh, out there. So with that, uh, we, are ha uh, we are happy to, for today, we are very happy, we are very, very glad to invite the three speakers, uh, which they are studies in this uh, professional uh, program. And then eventually they'll switch their path uh, to this uh, other field, then they are doing very good now. So uh, with that, uh, let me introduce the three of our speakers for today. The first one, uh, yeah, three speakers are the, the first one adalah uh, Mr. Salam. And then the second one adalah uh, Miss uh, No Zalika. And then the third one is the 17. So, uh, okay, nampak screen dia kan? Okay, but let me see properly. Okay, the first one, uh, Salam, dia, uh, dia adalah graduate architect, part two architect from UPM. Uh, he's my uh, escalate, uh, uh, cosmet, dia adalah my cosmet. And then uh, currently, he is the managing director of this uh, Karik's Pitch Serve uh, I believe semua yang bagi, uh, aki student yang bagi MAB, semua tu kan, uh, probably you, you meet with this uh, legendary guy. Um, other than that, the second one adalah uh, Miss uh, No Zalika. Miss No Zalika dia adalah uh, creative director of this uh, products uh, product design company. He's doing. Uh, she is uh, doing some leather wear, I guess. It's a leather wear together with her husband. And then uh, I will leave it. I will leave the detail to her to explain later on. Uh, I, I, I believe uh, he got a lot of uh, awards winning as well. And then the third one adalah uh, Mr. Seven Ting. Mr. Seven Ting is uh, our UCTS alumni, uh, QS graduate. And then uh, after he graduate, he managed to uh, work as a, as a landscape contractor. And then eventually now is a, a contractor, is a full force contractor. So... With that, I guess we can start with our first speakers, which is the Salam. Okay, Salam, shall I pass the mic to you? All right, thank you, Sam. Okay, thank you, UCTS, to, uh, for having me here. All right, uh, so Sam, you not start terus on slide or just I brief? Uh, I don't uh, know, you, 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 can, you can introduce yourself a bit uh, uh, Okay, all right. So, uh, my name actually name Alif Amirul Salam. So, my commercial name Salam Chomprang. Uh, mm -hmm. From Garage Special, I'm managing director. Uh, so, our, our uh, Garage Special located at Cyberjaya. So, my background basically uh, architecture uh, in UPM, graduate architect in UPM. Uh, so, Sam, okay? Okay, boleh, boleh. All right. <coughs> All right, so next. Okay, uh, this uh, maybe just short brief about my uh, study punya background. So I just make it short. Okay, I, I punya study on secondary uh, on MRSM Pasalak, Perak. So after that, I masuk uh, uh, matrix, uh, Pusat Sesi Sain, University Malaya. And then uh, graduate architect at UPM, Universiti Putra Malaysia, Sedang. Uh, so I'm from Pekan Pahang. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, uh, we go to about my knowledge. Lah. Okay, basically uh, I'm a Bachelor Design in Architecture Part 1 in UPM uh, in 2006 and graduated, uh, graduated in 2009. Next. Okay, uh, so for my part two, Bachelor in Architecture ataupun BH uh, in UPM juga. So, uh, start 2013 and graduated 2015. So, during this time lah, I met uh, Samuel. So, antara uh, my student met yang gila-gila lah. <laughs> Alright, next. 
Okay, <coughs> this is my uh, my photo during uh, apa ni Mio Syariman Akitek. So uh, in Mio Syariman Akitek uh, for Akitek industry uh, around two years uh, from 2009 uh, until 2011, and then after that uh, I moved to rank Akitek Senang Bahad. Uh, not my company, bukan macam prank ke rank architect that's rank architect senang bahat uh, 2011-2012 uh, ok next alright uh, so topik hari ni about beyond professional uh, practice so basically uh, during my study that's always something I looking forward lah so uh, especially uh, activity yang not include in uh, studio. So like uh, on my part, part one, so uh, I involved dalam suksis uh, uh, sukarelawan polis uh, uh, siswa-siswi. Uh, so around the three, three years, so uh, I keluar as a polis suka, uh, inspector sukarela and then I love to travel, I love to uh, hiking, jungle trekking. So that's why I uh, went to Uh, Mau kena malu, <coughs> uh, so jangan sampai pun jap, alright. And then uh, after that, one the best thing I buat dekat beri uh, time I study uh, architecture workshop lah. I involve architecture workshop starting 2006 uh, sampai sekarang. So that's I love to that you can see uh, the photos uh, during my part two. So uh, during my part two, I still join architecture workshop. So I be uh, uh, the apa ni uh, leader the so I participate uh, with them uh, so especially in UM and then after that uh, the Tiang Seri uh, and so final <coughs> uh, my involvement the uh, untuk as participant and uh, observer lah the uh, uh, kata sila lingko wing okay next. <coughs> Okay, uh, when we talk about passion, so uh, apa yang uh, ada sekarang from Garage Pixel because of my passion lah. So my passion is on uh, photography, so especially on photography, well, I start uh, photography on uh, landscape, so I love to shoot landscape but focus on uh, waterfall, so I love travel, I love hiking. So I combine I am my my uh, passion that I love hiking tra uh, traveling. So I involve this group luar biasa uh, photography. So yang punya tu pergi masuk hutan and then travel maybe uh, jungle trekking around three to uh, three to four uh, hours. Uh, the maximum I pernah follow orang eight hours lah trekking sampai uh, area dekat uh, dekat Rumping. So to take it a uh, uh, waterfall ni photo lah. So and then the best thing about architecture workshop ni uh, why I say about beyond uh, which architecture workshop is beyond because uh, in architecture workshop lah you can explore more sebab dia bukan on studio punya study. So from my part <coughs> on photography so I, 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 I can explore more. Uh, what that you saw and the best thing I menang uh, photography uh, during that time at Dualisma. Alright, next. <clears throat> okay, now you can see about uh, I dah bagi tahu about my passion and also my knowledge. So how uh, I I combine my passion and my knowledge uh, my my knowledge to make very special. Okay, next. Okay, uh, you guys kalau Uh, photo yang uh, my my photos so yang uh, especially sekarang buat everyone dah ada kamera so there's a lot of category lah dalam uh, photography ni uh, the best thing uh, I nampak during my 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 studies tu ada architecture photo so I explore on that more lah sebab I ada knowledge about that and then I explore more that's why uh, you guys kena cari what is your passion and then what is uh, plus your knowledge in architecture now Okay, next. Okay, uh, who we are? Okay, Garis Special. Okay, for those yang pernah dengar because we are involved in architecture. Garis Special involved in architecture start uh, <coughs> start dekat UTM today uh, during Neon. So we are one of the sponsor because we always 
to support uh, back uh, for architecture student. So we are the main uh, one of the sponsor lah for uh, Neon and also for uh, continue to uh, uh, if not mistaken uh, redefine and then after that nyala. Tahun ni sepatutnya UPM kan, but pandemic. Okay, alright. Uh, garis pixel. Maybe uh, you guys uh, tanya tanya lah. Why garis pixel? Uh, okay, we we got that this name uh, from uh, garis pixel. I mean garis everything yang everything architecture or architect start their drawings, their design with garis. And then the basic fundamental of uh, pixel sendiri adalah the basic uh, untuk visual. Every visual start with pixel. That's the combination of the a basic uh, uh, architect and basic uh, visual. So we combine garis pixel. Uh, Doko is the company lah. Alright, next. <coughs> okay, uh, this is my partner, uh, Fidoz Ahmad. Okay, uh, we are Malaysian uh, creative company in Saibu Jaya. Uh, okay, alright. Uh, <coughs> Establish uh, principle of playful, uh, playfulness, collaboration, desire to surprise and be surprised. So we are uh, starting uh, from architecture student from UPM. So we expand now uh, with <coughs> others, <coughs> sorry, others, uh, uh, other student from uh, others new city. Okay, next. Okay, uh, this uh, our team. So I'm Salan Jomprem, Managing Director. Fidas Ahmad is our creative, creative director. Okay, we have a creative editor. So from uh, UITM, Bachelor of Science Archi uh, Architecture, Part 1 UITM, Jenko, and also our special architecturalist, Zakiman, uh, Master in Architecture in UITM. So this combination of UPM and also UITM. So the best thing of uh, us, uh, kita orang jumpa time workshop. So Zenko time workshop also, the Zakima also time workshop. That's why uh, always explore, always uh, if you got uh, peluang untuk apa ni, uh, enter ataupun uh, participate in architecture workshop, try to enter because that's the time you you expand your your circle, you expand your creativity. Alright, next. Okay, uh, when we talk about equipment and then we talk about technician, uh, basically uh, kita kena something lah, kita kena spend. So from our side, we have Canon, we have Sony, uh, also GoPro. So uh, some of the lens that special for architecture photo like uh, till shift. Uh, so maybe you guys can can search for those yang minat architecture photo, can search till shift lens. Uh, we have Sigma and also white lens lah. So uh, we jump to another uh, visual exploration on drone, especially on aerial view. So that's the DJI Mavic Pro and DJI uh, Phantom 4. All right, next. Okay, uh, that's some photo uh, we are taking uh, for clients. This is a client from uh, Architect 61, uh, Disara Central. Okay, next. Uh, this should pakai, pakai camera and then this uh, should part by using drone, uh, ICT and also uh, uh, company from uh, Citizen, uh, sorry, company for Archimetric. Uh, next. <coughs> uh, this uh, photos, uh, okay, we can see the right photo, uh, the left photo is uh, we took uh, at Surya KSCC punya leaf core and then the right photo is uh, landscape photo. So we explore uh, also on uh, landscape photo, we involved in landscape photo uh, for uh, landscape architect. Alright, next. Okay, uh, uh, just some brief lah uh, about uh, production process. Okay, when we talk about uh, how we we combine uh, architecture knowledge and then how how uh, architecture knowledge to uh, make us now. So kalau kita tengok pun konsep ni just konsep uh, production process lah. Uh, we we said about uh, we start with concept and analysis. So from uh, our side architecture student architecture. So we also start with concept. We also start dengan analysis 
and then we go to our research so film process ni lebih kurang macam you guys buat 3D and then uh, and then we jump to trim editing visual effects that uh, related dengan uh, your your rendering for your job uh, your project and then technical this time more on final script and then lastly publication uh, packaging more on uh, when you present to your client uh, or pass to, to your client so we can see the similarity uh, from our side on production process when during our process uh, study at uh, school okay next Okay, this uh, our client. So we involve more uh, government, uh, non-government bodies, and construction companies, lah. Uh, also operational business firm. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, <coughs> uh, okay. For and that, and that have the uh, my drone tech initiative. So we involve uh, with them. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, uh, so and that. Um, have a my drone ecosystem. So for graphical, uh, we focus on services that drone uh, cine cinematic and aerial ima imaging uh, services. So everything yang related dengan architectural punya industry. Uh, so that's our our forte lah. So we took uh, uh, architecture photography, video process, uh, especially on uh, apa ni job-job uh, yang macam uh, site progress. And then, uh, ada sah. Alright, next. <coughs> yeah, that's some some uh, short short brief uh, that I'm that uh, post uh, about garis pixel. Uh, so the best uh, the best thing because uh, last last month we won uh, be a winner for Jahan uh, drone uh, video drone challenge. <coughs> And then. Uh, Last week, we just launched uh, the official video for uh, Verona Design. So she, uh, the Verona Design won a Honor Award for Malaysia Landscape Architect Award uh, 2019. Okay, and then the 2018, we involve more uh, on uh, landscape videography produced on <coughs> how to take a video uh, and then uh, to uh, people yang nak submit for Malaysia Landscape Architect. Uh, award. Right, next. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is the best thing uh, Garif Pixel uh, apa ni? Uh, for Garif Pixel memang mer uh, remarkable lah because uh, the moment we met uh, Tun Mahdi uh, so this during interview PAM, so PAM uh, and Garif Pixel collaboration so we uh, interview uh, Tun Mahdi about Uh, 60 years architecture Malaysia so the best thing during this time uh, about Tun Mahdi uh, dia punya aura lah especially and then uh, when uh, she uh, when he said about Putrajaya they, they can uh, elaborate in architecture punya term so that's the best thing lah okay next <coughs> Okay, ni some sharing lab uh, yang Kit Garis pernah buat. Next. Uh, okay, we involved in uh, IIUM. So, uh, UIA. UIA have their heritage study. Uh, so, they have uh, uh, document can all the heritage. Uh, macam major drawing lah sebenarnya. Major drawing with documentation. So, one of the 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 part, the main part of their uh, heritage study is uh, video documentation. So that's why we uh, go, we went to uh, IIUM uh, and sharing about how to make a uh, architectural video for documentation. Okay, All right. Next. <clears throat> okay, this uh, May uh, during uh, PKP. Uh, so this is a uh, drone raya review. So just uh, sharing about <coughs> how to take a good uh, cinematic photo and also uh, review for all the photo that posted on uh, Facebook in the group. Okay, next. Okay, this is uh, last month. So we have a smart photo uh, uh, photography uh, for uh, Ministry of Agriculture. So we share about how to take photo using a uh, smartphone. All right, next. 
<coughs> okay, media coverage. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, uh, we are featured uh, on uh, Architect Malaysia magazine uh, early this year, 2020. So, for those yang nak tahu about uh, more about how we build garage pixel, I had the cerita uh, on uh, AM. So, you guys can can find this uh, AM. <coughs> okay, next. Okay, uh, latest one is uh, we featured on news uh, Sunday time, NST, uh, also 2020, around this uh, August, uh, it's not mistaken. Okay, it's about forgotten space. Uh, that's our initial pro uh, uh, initiative project uh, to take uh, almost uh, in architectural visual uh, projection. Okay, uh, I can elaborate more. Next. Alright, uh, this our uh, project uh, is we call Jejak, Journey in Empowering Journal of Architecture. Okay, next. <coughs> okay, uh, Jejak ni sebenarnya uh, non-profit uh, architecture project lah, initiative from Gary Pichel. So, we travel uh, uh, we travel around Malaysia to take architecture photo, especially focus on uh, Heritage, heritage building lah yang macam dah nak roboh and then yang macam-macam dah lama yang dah tak digunakan or even dah digunakan tapi orang tak tahu pun so that's our initiative even jejak sendiri pun we took from jejak uh, combination of jejak plus architecture that's the term from jejak uh, came out that's the our philosophy combination of garage and pixel English and Malay uh, okay uh, so our uh, able to produce picture that beauty of architecture in Malaysia inspiring uh, others lah alright next <clears throat> okay this some some uh, photos we took uh, that's a series of jejak uh, on our our page on our Facebook so you, you guys can check it out uh, so we have now uh, have a sick journal uh, of uh, jejak so this is Malaysia uh, this is Masjid Lama Pekalang Kakak next <coughs> so this is Masjid Lama Kampung Pelangai, Kuala Bila. Next. Okay, this is Masjid Kampung Pantai, Cenur. Next. <coughs> okay, uh, this is Masjid Lama Kampung Ceruk Tualang, Cenur. Next. Okay, uh, Masjid Lama Kampung Terusan Juasi. So you can see the beauty of architecture yang ada dekat this building. So you can capture all the detail all the surrounding so yang orang tak orang lain yang tak nampak lah so that's why we uh, one of the initiative because we takut sebab lama-lama uh, building ni akan hilang dan akan roboh macam tu je so so at least kita ada capture all the 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 document ke all the photos so dia akan ada lah dia akan kekal kat situ okay so that's our initiative lah this our team <coughs> yang pergi so kita travel uh, took the photos, uh, videos so hopefully uh, kita akan, everyone akan nampak lah appreciate uh, architecture activity yang yang ada dekat uh, especially in Malaysia sebab selalu kita nampak in overseas so now kita try appreciate back so we use our our forte on especially on photography, videography so contribute back to people okay, next. <coughs> okay, that's from me. So you you guys can check it out our artwork uh, at Garis of Mind. But also uh, uh, our video, uh, like I said before, video for uh, jejak uh, we posted on Garis Pixel Group in Facebook. So you guys can check it out juga. Also the jejak project. Okay, thank you. All right, Sam, thank you, Sam. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Salam. It's uh, always right. inspiring uh, to hear Salam your story. Uh, I guess you are this uh, the pride of the UPM. Uh. Although, <laughs> walaupun saya, uh, saya AR lah kan, tapi I'm looking at this kan, Salam. You are more, you mean spirit in architecture lagi banyak lah. Berparak lah. Sampai I'm malu lah. I'm malu lah tengok you story kan. I feel like uh, I sendiri macam not doing enough. Okay, uh, there are many, uh, there are a lot of uh, questions for you, but then uh, uh, I will come back okay. to your question mm -hmm. later on, but Masa Prasantai. Mm -hmm. I believe the audience will have a question. Okay, 
So for the school, uh, for the audience yang sekarang ni tengah you tengok YouTube live ni, uh, you can just uh, let your question in the chat chat box dulu. Nanti we will, I will as a moderator saya akan bacakan soalan-soalan tu ya. So for time being, uh, kita continue with our second speaker, uh, the uh, Miss uh, No Zalika. Um, Uh, Miss Nozalika, they are the, the creative director. Yeah, uh, they have. They are doing this uh, product design, uh, product design company together with her husband. So without further ado, yeah. uh, let me uh, wait. Okay, let me intro. Uh, let me invite our our uh, Miss uh, Nozalika. Okay, wait. Ah, uh, I I can unlock buka full screen jump. Okay. Boleh. Here you go. Uh, yeah, Miss uh, Miss Tuala Salika, please. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, boleh. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Hi, my name is. Uh, 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 thanks, Sam, for inviting me. Uh, thanks, Samuel, for inviting me. Okay, so. Uh, I am actually a graduate architect from UM, and now I'm a specialist. My I have my own thing called as visuals in the side. Okay, so, uh, next. Okay, so what is it that I do? So basically, Snatcher, we're in the industrial design punya business lah. So we focus uh, mainly on leather products. Small leather goods. So I started out with handbags, but now I've expanded to other things. So uh, in my business, in what I do, uh, because it's under industrial design, and I specifically do leather goods. So I must have uh, I have leather knowledge, and then obviously I have technical craftsmanship. So uh, um, in a fashion photographer, so I pick up some art direction skills. So that's very beneficial to the business. And uh, the most important part about my business is the business operations, which is the corporate part of the work. So uh, that those are some things I'm going to share today. Next. Okay, so my education and training. All right, so uh, next. So I uh, I memang sekolah dekat sini, dekat uh, KL. I went to Sri Aman Girls School in PJ. And then... Um, I didn't initially wanted to do architecture, but I just have the inclination to for art. So actually, my experiment result was pretty good. So I called for uh, several interviews like uh, PNB, Petrona, JPA, semua panggilan untuk interview by then, semua pun tak dapat. So back, back, then, back then, kalau kita tak dapat interview kan, dia akan tolak kita to whatever last choice kita, uh, last choice kita dalam UPU tau sebab uh, dia tak boleh nak save kita punya first choice. So, I dapat architecture and I dapat architecture dekat UIA. So, uh, that's my part one. So, nak tak nak, I uh, pursue lah juga because I didn't want to waste time. So, I uh, did my part one dekat UIA. And then my uh, second degree, uh, actually after ha habis UIA tu, uh, uh, I, I kerja lah sekejap kan, I kerja sekejap. And then baru I pergi ke, um, baru I pergi ke, Uh, UN. So, pergi UN ni pun ceritanya, uh, like I said, I didn't actually wanted to do architecture but I'm just good at studying. So, uh, my dad uh, insisted that I finish uh, architecture. So, I was offered UC of Oxford Brooks, I was offered UC of Melbourne but I didn't go as well because I thought if I'm not planning to become an architect, I didn't want to spend so much money. So, luckily, UM offered me a place as well. So, I went to UM. So, that's my uh, part two lah. And then, um, after finishing part two, uh, dekat uh, UM, uh, I had a hard time to get a job. I think, uh, I don't know why, but I applied to so many architecture firm and I tak boleh dapat kerja. So, I felt very, at that time, I felt very betrayed lah. Macam susahnya dapat kerja kan. After so many eight years um, in architecture, I really couldn't uh, get a job in uh, architecture. So, and then some some of the interviewers check up maybe it's because don't get us, but you kahwin, so susah nak hire. Because masa habis belajar UM tu, I, I got married. And then I guess that was the reason why most people turned me down lah, somehow, sadly. So, uh, after one year of being jobless, 
was still applying and uh, still jobless, uh, I decided that with all my qualification and ability, should should be able to make an income. So I told my husband, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna wait. So I'm gonna start my company. So it's not advisable to do that but I decided to do it anyway so I t- started Tas Bijou Sembahat. Bahad so I started Tas Bijou Bahad after I gave birth to my first daughter uh, was also one of the reasons why I couldn't get a job most people don't want to hire uh, you know pregnant lady so um, after I gave birth we started Tas Bijou Sembahat, Bahad and then I immediately went for my apprenticeship and uh, I, I in Europe mainly in Italy and uh, Budapest but generally all parts of Europe uh, is where I studied about leather, about leather craftsmanship. So it's a specialization young. Uh, I learned to love also because I have to survive. And um, because, you know, when you're an architect, you're trained in, in many disciplines. And I, uh, I didn't want to start selling tudong or baju. I wanted to do something a bit more, you know, not, not too technical, I mean, not too fashion. Uh, so that's why I went into um, accessories, leather goods with a five-year plan. Okay, so next. So my five-year plan. So yeah, this is where, uh, this is like me in Italy and Europe. When I first started, uh, we would go like, dalam dunia industrial design, leather goods, kita ada dunia sendiri. Macam mana photography ada dunia sendiri, semua ada dunia sendiri. So uh, leather product uh, industry in Europe is a huge deal. It's a huge, huge deal. Is uh, especially in Italy itself, there are you know universities, colleges, academies just focus on um, this business, this leather business. So uh, Italy is where I spend most of my time uh, with. All my partners are there. Uh, this is where I source raw materials. Uh, this is where you know like, much like how we have datum to architecture. So there's like a datum for leather uh, industry. There's like you know, pres- uh, artistic, artisanal um, presentations, there are talks about sustainable practice, everything I do, just like the same thing, except that it's in the leather uh, uh, business. So, yang, the one on the top right, too, that uh, the uncle and that lady, those are my uh, uh, main craftsmen uh, in uh, Budapest, and that's me in Italy, just going to some of the uh, expos. Next. So, okay, so I have a five-year plan. So first, uh, because uh, I couldn't get a job, so I started from home. I didn't have much money then. And then we got a studio, a small studio. So while I was uh, still uh, uh, raising my baby, la, my, my first child, I uh, bought business from studio. So the idea was to start this as a fashion business, to, you know, dapat can do it. And then from there, uh, we hope to become a consultant at the end of the five-year journey. So we're already five years now, and uh, that's exactly what's happening now. Next. So yeah, so this is, um, when I first started, we do we did retail. So we did lots of, uh, you know, we just sell like a normal boutique because we need to generate the, the, the money. We didn't have any investor. Everything was from our own savings. So we had to start somewhere. And then, um, and then uh, from there, uh, we slowly uh, start several projects. Like Salam, he has amazing projects to, you know, that gives back to the community. So I have my own projects as well. So one of it is this one. So this is the Songket Nidri collection. So this is something that I started about in my second year of business, I think, because I wanted to like give back to the community. So I uh, came up with a collection that focuses on uh, elevating Songket. So this is Trangano Songket, but with Italian craftsmanship. So uh, this was a hit when it first came out. Memang it was hit. So in total, we made about 500 units, almost 500 units up to today. So sekarang dah not as popular, but I was I when it was so popular, memang dapat award. I was paid on newspaper everywhere, like live talk shows, more call because nobody has ever done that. So because of this um, project, we uh, tasbiju memang naik lah. Okay, so this is like, I'm still very proud of this. And I think that every, everyone yang macam kalau business dia, dia dah buat, you know, some, some sort of income, they should really give back to the community in one way, like how Salam buat initiative too, and maybe something like this, not just, you know, buat business and not, not create some sort of awareness. So, and then uh, uh, the consultancy part, uh, so first we did retail. So meaning retail, meaning we created a lot of products and kita jual, 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 jual. 
So after dah ada volume, dah ada duit, I really wanted to go into the direction of consultancy lah. I didn't want to be a boutique owner forever. I really wanted to become a consultant. So we we started with uh, making bespoke bags. So bespoke bags ni, uh, they're more expensive than uh, our retail goods. So retail goods maybe a few hundreds, beratus ratus ringgit. But when I went into Uh, the bespoke consultancy uh, business because kita dah a few years kita dah ada nama and the people dah trust so my product got more expensive so something like this is 3,500 so this is bespoke meaning buat upon order so clients will come and see me and then kita akan consult like how you wanna you know buat curtain <laughs> design your house or something yeah so kita kita boleh pilih ladder you can select your hardware you can choose whatever so it is fun it's fun so this is currently my uh how should i say the front of my business it was my main as well so the five years again so this was like the third or fourth year of my uh, business it was my main so now in our fifth year uh, we've moved on lagi kita dah grow lagi so now we're into more technical products so um can i see my slide i forgot <laughs> yeah so yeah all right so this is uh, yeah, this is Songket Mele, some one of the photo shoot I shared banyak lagi gambar but my computer rosak so this is one of it i that i managed to say and uh, next Uh, so this is like one of the events we do uh, because of the bespoke business. Uh, we're in the luxury brand uh, category. So uh, how we 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 engage with our customers are mainly through very fancy events. So this is like the fun part of the business, you know, uh, socializing. Actually, like Mister Salong kata, they active dengan uh, architectural workshop. I'm active. I handle dualisma. <laughs> Kau M dulu. Yeah, so memang, memang, memang best, memang best. So yeah, uh, advice for students to be active masa belajar lah, you will not regret it. Next. Okay, so yeah, this is my new focus. So sekarang kita dah buat uh, benda yang macam-macam sikit lah. So tactical combat gears, equestrian wear and uh, you know, gears, uh, cotton based product. So uh, I like, I have clients yang maybe they're the like, you know, Uh, dia ada uh, equestrian and dia nak tempah dia punya saddle dia nak buat dia punya own collection of uh, leather uh, leather clothing topi naik kuda tu semua kan uh, so those are the things that I uh, I help with lah tactical combat gears mainly we do for um, we we're currently starting on uh, starting with tender uh, government tender so these are the things that we uh, we are into now lah so these are in the background we don't show much on social media because they're not like like fancy things to be uploaded and usually we keep quiet lah bila kita join uh, co- apa, contract government apa, kita keep quiet so I'm not on the front people only see this lah that I'm a fashion person lah but uh, in the background uh, I do a lot of ethical combat yes uh, next yeah so this is like Things that we do like leather gloves, and then we did we do uh, clutches, and it's for some uh, obviously for government agency. Uh, next, yeah. See, this is like a uh, custom uh, like uh, outdoor shoes, equestrian equestrian shoes. Yeah, ni macam yang belakang ni Sam Brown belt yang polis pakai. Uh, so these are all like leather goods. So there are the more technical things. I have more, but I cannot show everything, <laughs> unfortunately. Next. So yeah, I want to talk about this because uh, macam sorry gila tengok saya dalam punya uh, presentation memang uh, uh, simple but because I wanted to talk about because I had a lot of juniors coming to me and asking like macam nak start something yang yang non-architecture. This is so important because nowadays like I don't want anyone uh, anything like anyone to go through what I went through like dah belajar 8 tahun and then you couldn't get a job. Like how do you deal with that? Okay, so how to start your own non-architecture practice. Okay, I only really want to share this. So next. Okay, first, you have to be 100% sure you don't want to be an architect. Like for me, um, I'm, I'm just a good student. So I memang, I memang kalau I boleh dapat kerja, I might just want to go all the way to part three. I'm, I'm just okay je. But that was not the case for me. So I had to make a decision. But but you you have to ask yourself first, is it worth it dah belajar lapan tahun and then you tak nak practice langsung? You should really, I really advise, um, uh, like for me, I didn't have a choice sebab I memang tak dapat kerja so I had to start my own company right away. 
uh, but if you ada peluang untuk bekerja dulu i advise you kerja dulu you kena kerja dulu uh, i swear to god i sometimes i uh, deal with my juniors kan kita saja uh, kita saja juniors yang dia grad je part one terus uh, start business and it's a bit hard for me to deal with them because we realize that they don't have some certain skills like um, nak buat invoice pun tak tahu nak macam mana nak buat company profile pun tak tahu uh, I luckily I have my husband dia memang kerja dalam corporate Uh, dia memang kerja kat MNC semua so he's actually our managing director part time uh, so when because I have him so things like financial accountancy semua dia 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 boleh susut but I realize that a lot of uh, for a lot of our juniors you know, or yang nak start business they just freaking nak start creative business uh, minus the corporate part so you have to know the corporate part that's number one so if you're sure that you want to be an, uh, don't want to be an architect then please kerja dulu find out. So if you tak nak jadi architect, it's okay. You don't have to go to architecture firm. But do your internships with the right companies. Like maybe you can go for uh, Petronas graduate program, CIMB graduate program, Shell graduate program, Citibank graduate program. You have to, um, one thing that I nampak yang problem dengan um, architecture graduate that now that I am no longer in the industry is that kita usually kalau kita kerja dalam firm, kita kerja dengan architect, 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 <laughs> you know. So mana berbintang yang sama. But kalau you kerja MNC, you kerja dengan orang yang graduate daripada UK in accountancy, duduk sebelah you. You kerja dengan orang yang graduate engineering biotechnology tapi buat PR daripada US. So you, you, when you work with MNCs, you mix with people from different things. Kadang-kadang kita, kita, kita rasa macam, oh kita lah yang paling kreatif dalam dunia kan. But do you know, the head of merchandising at Petronas, dia ada bachelor in commerce. Dia tak ada apa-apa artistic background pun. Tapi dia head of, uh, head of buat t-shirt, buat uh, lanyard. So these are the things take a step to expose yourself to be on site. This is like so important. Can I, can you show my site? The next. Yeah, we have to start today. So uh, I advise like uh, you find like your, what's your main, you know, you know what? even my passion. Uh, I had to do it because I didn't have money to start anything else. So I start like handbags because this is like the one thing that I can afford to start with my money. But what you do is you expose yourself first to the corporate environment because when you do business, you have to know, you have to have corporate skills. And these are the things they don't teach you in architecture school. They don't. Um, so you have to expose yourself to people from various qualifications, various backgrounds, try to do internships for six months at, you know, start up tech startup ke apa ke, kan sekarang ada banyak, Malaysia ada banyak startup kan. Uh, do you expose yourself first, then from there you will decide, oh I think I can do marketing lah, oh I think I can do sales, I think I can do PR. So you expose you, jangan ingat sebab, lot, I meet a lot of um, architecture graduates, they, they want to do marketing, but let me tell you, marketing is not about Photoshop, you buat graphic, oh buat logo, that's marketing, that's branding, no. Like in the corporate sense, Marketing is very theoretical. There's customer analytics, there's uh, the research, there's the uh, campaign planning, campaign planning tu pula dia ada 12 month punya calendar, blah, blah, blah. So, it's not some of the things yang you have to expose yourself first lah. And then, um, yeah, we have to build up your portfolio. I advise don't rush to start your own business. Maybe by the time you are at the team, you can start your business like, unless you, have, don't, you don't have a choice lah. And then let's see, uh, yeah, be visible um, on social media. Uh, have a good persona. Uh, like right now, I'm a very salesperson. <laughs> I give a, 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 quite a lot of interviews on TV. So I, I'm always like, yes, yes, yes. And office stop macam ni pun. So yeah, that's number one. And then uh, have a start of capital. Uh, try, like if you are very serious about starting a business like me, I was very serious because I had no choice. So I sold off things. I took out my savings and really started. Like and, and then have a five-year plan. Okay, get a trusted business partner. You cannot do this alone. So you have to get a trusted business partner. Uh, for me, I have my husband who is opposite of me. Like I'm the creative brain, but he's the analytical brain. So we're like satu gang lah memang boleh uh, ni. Now you can start small. You can start from your home or a studio, but think big. Five-year plan. All right. And then uh, be serious with your business plan. So, and then um, 
after a few years of practice, even for me myself, uh, think about upskilling. Think about maybe getting a master's in, uh, like maybe I'm trying to take a master's in marketing if I have the money. So that's something because I already have two degrees in uh, creative. So maybe I want to get one qualification in uh, business practice. So it's very important. So for you to be able to uh, converse with your clients, because my clients are many corporate women, so you want to be able to be on the same wavelength with them. Okay, and then uh, lastly, be patient. If you are planning to leave architecture, you want to go beyond architecture, you have to be patient. Uh, and remember what I said just now. Like, find out what is it that you are actually good at. If it's not, usually architect, I tengok, kebanyakan, uh, yeah, they, they, they would do like photography, uh, they would do fashion, um, uh, you know, maybe marketing. So, but there are many other things. Uh, I would advise that you go to LinkedIn right now and then uh, find out uh, what other things that you can take. Qualification professional line that you may take. Even now, I'm doing my uh, technologies with MBOT, Malaysian Board of Technologies. So, I'm trying to get a TS uh, in front of my name. Uh, that's going to be a long journey. But there are many other things that you can do. Maybe you can take... Um, other professional uh, papers in operations, professional papers in logistics, ada banyak lagi. So, it's not necessarily kena creative. It can be uh, many other things. So, yes, that's that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Miss uh, No Zalika, for this uh, also very inspiring uh, sharings on how you start from this, uh, the bottom of your life and there's a uh, um, then your strides upwards and then your your creates your own brand yeah and then it's uh indeed very inspiring your spirit because yeah uh, you did uh you take your own initiative uh to learn in the Milan or in the overseas to learn the skill and then come back and then start up with a, a totally brand new brand uh. it's a uh, those this kind of uh, entrepreneurship spirits uh, I think uh uh it's it's a mo it's a role models for our students okay. Coming up next is uh, the third speaker. Uh, it's a seven thing. Seven thing is a QS uh, education background. It is a UCTS alumni. And then uh, he did his, uh, he's from Bintulu, but he did his uh, uh, diploma and also degree in Cebu, in KLT and also UCTS. And afterward, he straight away, because uh, I believe he, all the while he had the dream of become a, a businessman, a, a contractor. So he's, um, the detail of the story, let's hear from him personally, shall we? So, okay, uh, wait, uh, I wait, I now book up full screen job. Hi, okay. everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Ting Totuan from Pintulu. I'm the graduated QS student from UCTS uh, in 2016. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my company background is established in 2015. Uh, actually, the scope of work is started with landscape and maintenance service since 2015, before I graduate uh, until present. And then started uh, architecture and civil structural works since 2016 until present. And also we start the piping works from 2019 until today. Uh, for, for the first point, why I start my business? Actually, I am the ambitions. I want to be some businessman like Samuel say. So from I graduate, I direct go into the business and I start my business before my graduation. Uh, but how I start? Actually, I started with uh, my friend introduced me to get uh, some contract for the So my first contract of my business is actually introduced by my classmate. It's also QS. So actually, in study in the university, uh, first the point, uh, you have to know uh, many of your classmates or others' classmates. So you can get, this people can help you in the future a lot. And then what I benefited in the study in QS, actually the QS skills helped me to can getting the, manage the contract, how to manage the construction in the progress, pre-contract and post-contract things. 
So we're very familiar with this pre-contract and post-contract things. Uh, so easy to taking advantage on this contractual things, especially we study in the QS. But we are a little bit disadvantaged in the technical part. But so this technical part we have to learn after we step in the construction is too late already. But uh, you have to face some failure or challenges in the the moment you step in. So this the my first project, very first contract in my whole 2015. Actually, I do it myself and a few of the workers together we start planting the glass. This is my project in Pintulu. The uh, I think this is the apartment project. So that time I start with just a uh, land a front in front of my house. I start planting the grass in my house and then I start uh, nursery some tree or grasses in front of my house. Then I start think to planting house in other people's house, some project like this. This is the very beginning of my business. Uh, like I say, the, the land in front of my house. So that time I'm and my friend just uh, simply starting by by very raw 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 land and starting the business like this. And then after some experience in construction, I starting to get the CV word uh, and architecture words in 2016. This is the shop lock uh, project. But uh, in that time I was quite uh, not so in experience of the this kind of project. So actually I'm facing so many challenges and risks on this kind of project. So, so after that, we also our company also taking the cleaning project of UCTS as my uh, where, where I graduated. So uh, cleaning and the maintenance is really I, I I that time I really start with very expert with. So after that, uh, we will continue. Uh, and here I want to share some risks. Uh, actually, think be a contractor is not hard, but sustain as a contractor is very hard. First one, you have to know the knowledge of the technologies uh, from to solving every problem for the project you're taking. And then the workmanship and the team of your team need to be very reliable. And then the team can create very smooth work for you and also troublesome work. Uh, and then the next time is the is the management of your project management. Very thanks to my partner actually and also my wife and the, my classmate. He helped a lot in my management things uh, because he managed me and I managed the company. So actually he uh, my company is quite uh, easy to manage but actually the every single decisions we can make to uh, create a great loss and most important is the financial every contractor facing the financial problem no matter is uh, financial for your own on financial from the client actually it's not how to how the way you earn the money actually it's how the way you use the money so the risk is the uses of money can create a problem to your companies. So I share some ongoing project uh, for now now ongoing of my company. This is the direct headquarters of the uh sectors in Tan. And this is the elevated Government sectors in the Sabao Ulu Sabong project. And this is the ground tank, ground tank uh, clearings. Now we're still doing the tank clearings. And this is the elevated tank, is uh, slightly bigger than the previous one. The in the Okay. 
coming back to me, shall we? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Seven Thing. Uh, for your information, Seven Thing is only 27 years old today, you know. So, <laughs> kind of success, right? You see, he's a, he has a self-motivated all this while he wants to become a businessman. And just now I talked with him. He says uh, he has no expert in any kind of construction. He, can, he know only QS, right? And as a Hindu, this uh, because of a keen or to become a businessman to venture into this uh, to venture into this uh, uh, construction field, he start up with uh, this uh, very simple uh, landscaping job, doing uh, without any staff. He just do on his own, and then slowly he he do take some a uh, a few thousand work ringgit when you have a contract, starting small together with his partner, one or two people, and then. Until until today, he got uh, he's managing um it's a big project a shop lots the barracks all those things uh. it's a uh, it's a uh, quite plausible for a a, a teenager uh, I would say it's, uh, below thirty years old that is a big achievement. Okay, we come back to here because I see a lot of a question now. I mean, a lot of people show interest in our topic today. Okay, let me scroll through first. Yeah, uh. like how to scroll. Second life. Okay, uh, so now we are entering into our uh, oral sampai session, talking, chatting session, okay? Shall we? I mean, screen blow. Eh, are we going to have a about a mere screen? Okay, okay, coming up, coming up. Okay, the first question I answer is a uh, small run at all. So, but uh, before I ask question of Borak Borak, I have to tell you what is uh, really happening here now. Especially, kalau uh, all of the speakers Garan is not in this architecture field. As we know, currently is the economic downturn, sebenarnya. And then, uh, banyak you, you know lah, banyak firm tu kan, from uh, firm architect lah, bukan. Either a upper the bottom staff ataupun tidak recruit for, for time being. So sekarang ni memang struggle for your information. Even internship sekarang pun agak susah nak cari. So student student ni dia memang face a very real life punya problem. Macam yang tu just now yang uh, Miss uh, No Zalika yang mentioned just now that sometimes you are, you have difficulty to get job. And then after so many years of label kan, dengan duit yang pakai kan, printing, buat model semua tu kan, dengan time invest tu kan, architecture pun cost yang paling, I, I would say uh, professional cost lah, it's a, it's a very difficult cost to pay. And then uh, they may face uh, difficulty in getting employment, ataupun uh, they are, some of them should have lost interest, let's say. Some of them should have lost interest in in the professional punya cost. Tapi, Wasted juga kan kalau dia just left the, the course macam ni kan. So, that's why they allow, I, I know a lot of students especially, they are struggling. They don't know what to move forward. So, I I rasa our, our topic hari ni memang time, time, uh, comes timely lah with the tiga expert ni yang go through the journey. Yang boleh share sikit on your personal experience. Okay, the first question I rasa either the parents of the student or the student themselves. Dia akan tanya adalah... What does this the the, the education background yang you are ambil kan? For example, QS atau architecture kan? The the studies yang you terima itu kan? How they contribute to your current work? Like, does it have anything to do? Kalau tidak macam a, little, a, a bit of sayang kan? Kalau you start fresh kan? So ada ke? Uh, I will ask uh, one by one later on. Ada ke you benefit from your study experience? Shall we? Uh, maybe we can start with the uh, Mister Salam. We are, we are. Let, let the screen switch to it. Yeah, yeah. Salam, what is your opinion on this? Yeah? So, let me share before. So, how, how my, my journey from Garis to Switzerland? So, <clears throat> that's why, uh, like you guys think of, uh, <clears throat> so during your, during your, your, your study, you need to have your own patient. So, especially, uh, beyond on uh, studio punya work. So <clears throat> from from the, your patient, so you add another another choice. So maybe after you settle your 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 maybe part one or maybe 
part two. So you can pursue your passion tu uh, even though even though you tak uh, contribute back ataupun you tak continue as architect. So kalau tengok kat situ sebenarnya uh, even Cambridge sendiri pun apply back uh, what everything yang kita orang study in uh, architecture. So even kalau you guys tengok pun on architecture part dia dah train you to be a critical thinking and then you have be a uh, presenter, good presenter. So all the all the the professional punya part you dah explore during your your uh, during your study. So I think the best thing of architecture tu that dia dia jadikan kita someone. So so I think architecture student ni every every time dia keluar pun dia akan jadi someone. So that's why uh, for my part uh, for those yang uh, yang still lagi focus on architecture. So Uh, and then yang nak jadi architect, okay, it's okay. So we got formation. So for those yang macam still lagi lah, nak jadi architect ke tak ni, try to to explore your 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 other other passion. So from that you can combine your your uh, knowledge about architecture and then uh, combine your knowledge on architecture and then your passion. So I pernah ada orang cakap, you dah study on architecture and then after that you are uh, part two. So why you tak nak jadi architect? So, the part rugi tu I tak nampak because I use all the architecture punya uh, knowledge during my study even lecturer pun I cakap thank you very much uh, because uh, you uh, everything about architecture you dah you dah bagi semuanya to me and then after that I apply back so uh, you ada student yang bukan saja jadi architect and also jadi Uh, something yang explore on especially macam kita especially focus on visual production okay man okay okay uh, okay uh, i see uh, seems like uh, what, you, what you are saying is uh, masa masa uh, study pun kita sudah kena uh, raj, i mean venture kan look at our asset yeah. look at our interest kan hobby lepas tu yeah. try to venture to many many field lah but mungkin sometimes yeah. about about Okay, MAB ke whatever kan, ataupun just yeah. taking photos. As I know, uh, salam kan, anak bongkar sikit rahsia. Salam last time, masa part two kan. Semua ni, semua kita ni pakai motorbike tau. Motorbike ataupun jalan kaki tau. Salam is the only one yang pakai nazar putih tau, yang canggih tau. Sebab, masa itu ah. dia sudah buat business, dia sudah ambil fotograf tau. Dia sudah, I would say dia sudah start the very early stage. Dia sudah, dia tahu, I would say dia sudah tahu apa expertise dia. Lagipun, lagipun saya nampak yang satu lagi is, uh, salam dia ada satu karisma tu. Dia macam, you know, it is, uh, kalau dia pergi satu tempat kan, dia boleh jadi star, dia, dia boleh menarik perhatian. Dia ada karakter macam tu. So, dia sesuai untuk macam mm-hmm. extrovert dengan DVD. So, I would say, uh, for salam dia case kan, I'm all three of us ni kan, all three of us ni kan, uh, dia sangat natural dia punya flow kan. Decision making to become a full-time photographer, aku tak, tak nampak pelik sangat. Dia memang, for early stage, dia pun mm-hmm. nak nampak macam tu lah. Kind of, uh, yeah, and, yeah. and then they have a passion and talent as well. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. I know that the young, 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 the the relationship between this, uh, the cost, the young, 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 the Okay, uh, actually tak, tak ada tak ada beza pun sebab memang uh, kita still buat product design which is the same discipline as architecture except that uh, industrial design maybe four years tapi kita macam belajar lama kan sampai two degrees kan but the basic things daripada concept, uh, brief, uh, prototyping, um, uh, delivery and final uh, product semua some uh, whatever I study in architecture. So, cuma when you study architecture, you're an all-rounder lah. That's why it's such a long, it takes such a long time to finish uh, all the way sampai part two. There's a reason behind that. Um, as an architect, kita ada corporate aspect, which is very important when you want to run a business. You you have to be a, an executive, executive. Um, uh, so that's where the architecture education comes in. But if you are a parent and you are worried about your child's future, you you're about to invest a lot of money in architecture because architecture is a very expensive course, which is why it's a bit frustrating. Kalau macam graduate, your child 
you know, that question. Uh, I, I suggest that after, if your, your child have this SPM and then you want to uh, push her to take uh, architecture, after finish part one, let her do something tutorial. If she cannot get an internship, I remember strongly suggest take an internship or a full-time uh, job for one year first before uh, pushing him or her into uh, part two. That's uh that's I think that's one of the mistake I didn't do after part one too. I internship sketch up and I just uh, I just admit part two and then I get lost uh, amongst my uh course mates. But during two three years, they already know how to run a practice. They already know how to do uh detailed drawing. So I suggest after part one, uh, uh push them to do and something entrepreneur like maybe start their own studio, start their own creative business. Maybe they can do cooking, you know, uh, making, you know, whatever, whatever it is, photography even. And then after that, Baru ask them if they want to still continue part two or not. So if, say, they want to have a part two now, if your child or you yourself don't have a part two now, and then uh, ada kesusahan nak cari kerja lah. Uh, again, try to help them uh, with uh, some, you know, entrepreneurial skills. Uh, right now, I interview young graduates juga. Um, one of the skills that they, they lack like, they like is, like I say, the persona. They don't have that, um, maybe uh, because, you know, you have to leverage on social media. So I think if you can uh, push your children to like uh, leverage on social media, uh, like LinkedIn, Instagram, and all sorts, it may help them in their employment. Uh, search. I still recommend kerja dulu. I don't recommend starting your own business right away. Actually, uh, uh, in my early 20s, I was with Rupa Jiwa Studio. I was a photographer myself. So there was uh, that time lah masa tu. Sebab I sebenarnya dah memang target nak jadi creative director. That's why I'm a bit macam nak be architect. So I was like, is it necessary I am be architect here if I'm going to be a creative director? Because I wanted to be a creative director in advertisement, in in marketing. I didn't want to be a creative director in in designing. Like as in uh, architecture tak apa ke. But of course, uh, you know, it's okay to finish part two architect. The problem with architecture is this. Um, I don't know whose fault it is, but... I don't want to blame anyone also, but memang even I myself, until today, I have to answer questions like, bukan nak kita buat building je ke? <laughs> like, you know, it's been so many years, <laughs> dude. Dah ada company pun, bukan korang buat building je ke? But for those who are aware, they are aware. They want to say, oh yeah, kita is a professional qualification, very diverse. I think uh, even the community itself, within the community itself, um, uh, memang uh, dia tak tahu kita ni apa. Sebab tu, you can find engineers doing HR. Or, or marketing. But architect je boleh pergi interview. Macam tak laku tak qualification tu. Macam bukan korang buat building je ke? It's, it's true. It's true. Like you can you can find somewhere yang uh, I know in fashion in. Graduate biotechnology from US. Tapi jadi head of HR kat Fashion Belly. I macam what? <laughs> like you know what? Kan? So tapi bila kita hantar resume kita. Oh this is. Dia buat, buat building je. You know. Padahal kita architect. So I don't know. The, the public awareness of kita punya qualification tu macam kurang lagi. Padahal kita dah ada macam-macam lah. Kita dah dah buat uh, data, PEM dan sebagainya dah, dah, dah we try. So, so I, which is why, which is why I said kalau lepas graduate part one ke part two tu, kalau you rasa you nak lari pada architecture, you have to have to do internship or masuk graduate program. Like banyak Fortune 500 company ada graduate program. Try to tunjukkan yang yang you're not just you, you can you can do more than just building. So I think that's the that's how you can help yourself. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, seems like what you are saying is that we need to try to uh, don't look narrowly into uh, architecture only, right? We can we should open up our horizon, right? I mean, explore different yes. options dulu kan. Tidak semestinya start to one, right? Okay, okay, that, that is uh, yeah, beyond, uh, beyond, beyond, uh, beyond, uh, beyond creative practice, lah. I see, okay, but, yeah, that is a great good advice because, uh, after all, after we graduate, basically, so that I got last kan, we can go through this, uh, the mm. first uh, course in the world, and so more. I would say most of the students are kind of uh, multi task, again, dear, so uh, other advantage, I see, too, we should explore that, that as well, but uh, Okay, uh, what about this uh, seven thing? Seven thing, what do you think? Uh, what, did you apply what you learned in your studies onto your current construction when you work? Uh, actually, my QS background is helping in uh, the 
return of the contract. Oh, okay. And, and also, also my, actually, actually QS, QS is in other, other company. company. He also is the one to manage the contract. Yeah. So actually, your classmate can be the one who intro. Hey, here got uh, some project in project. So actually, you can take this as a like uh, information from that. Where you got the project, then you can go to tender, tender and, and participate in that area. And, and also, actually, uh, QS skills uh, is uh, controlling the money of the mm. contract. So actually, you can be the one who control the contract. Uh, but with this profession, it actually is not enough yet. We still have, like, like uh, Zalika say, we have to fulfill others. PR, marketing, some skill like that. So as an entrepreneurship, you have to fulfill others' part. That's not in your profession. I see. So QS job is only the one thing to manage the contract. But you have to fulfill. Like actually practicals, like uh, you facing every, every client and then how to talk to them. It's a PR mm-hmm. skill. But uh, actually the university... Cultures is very good because you can facing architect friends, engineer friends, then talk to them, be friend with them, enjoy the moment you're in university. This friend can be the key point to your success. I see. Okay. Um. So, maksudnya kita punya apa connection during student time pun agak penting kan? That, that is the first step yang before you go into this ah uh, apa? Luar kerja kan, you have the basic connection and then seems like your friend can manage to introduce you uh, some project during early days, right? I mean, that's a, a good start as well. Okay, uh, another question, I rasa saya sangat, uh, I personally very interested to know is, um, mengapa you don't choose the, your current job? I know I know some of you are keen to go out from this uh, architecture, maybe kan? you're trying to move out from architecture. But why photography? Or why uh, later way? Apa yang, apa yang motif? Apa yang, apa yang mengapa kamu choose that particular thing? Is there any any special reason? Ah, uh, let's let's hear from Salam. Yeah, ada tak? Uh, first, yeah, bro. Uh, I cakap tadi pun one because of my passion lah. So I dah nampak lah. Even even during my study pun, I pergi shoot wedding, <laughs> I pergi keluar, pergi cai air terjun. So that's my passion lah. Even though I tahu on architectural punya so I, even I dah kerja pun on uh, part one after part one I kerja two years and then after after uh, sorry three years and then after uh, part two I straight away build uh, my uh, garis pixel with my partner. So I dah nampak kat situ. So I kena decide I want to be an architect or I I straight away to be a photographer. The So from that tu, I dah nampak dah when uh, and then dari satu, I tahu so my my on architectural punya on mm, design memang I uh, not 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 my forte lah so and then <coughs> bila I nampak okay, my forte especially on photography especially on PR uh, especially uh, uh, during uh, side project so that's why I pursue my my interest on photography so I straight away so I decide macam tadi uh, Lula Ika cakap so make sure you get 100% you guys tak nak jadi architect so you decide okay after part tu I decide terus so I dah tak masuk firm so I build my own tu my own uh, company and then I pun dah ada experience during my my uh, after part one so I dah kerja three years so that the the main thing uh, so you dah decide you tak nak ada Even though sebab after you keluar, after you grad, so you jadi photographer, that's dia macam downgrade sebenarnya. Uh, for me lah, for sebab especially you nak jadi sebab you akan dapat uh, your circle. So you akan dapat macam you nak jadi, dah jadi architect, why you nak jadi photographer pula. So that's uh, kena, kena, uh, kena apa ni, uh, strong lah, your mind kena strong. So, uh, So after on the dot you enter as photographer, as videographer, you know, you can jadi somebody yang different. Sebab so, orang lain semua keluar jadi arkitek. So but you keluar jadi someone yang arkitek plus photographer. Uh, that is the different. Uh, okay, alright. Okay. Hey, salam lah, salam. 
Actually, Sekarang uh. ni, Yu niche adalah uh, photographer yang ambil architecture kan? building, betul tak? Yeah, yeah. Tidak ada yeah. ambil wedding kan? Ke masih ada? Uh, uh, so, sekarang nak fokus on architecture, foto dengan video lah. So, even project. So, that's that's my focus lah. So, I tengok sebab even macam tadi, like I kata, kita ada rupa jiwa. That's, that's my, my, my shifu lah. Rupa jiwa. So, uh, so after 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 I finish so the idea I can nak jadi photographer architecture so I try to build platform sebenarnya garis fiction ni a platform for those yang uh, ada speciality on visual uh, macam kita ada macam my part uh, my my crew macam Zenko tadi pun uh, I jumpa Thai workshop dia ada niche uh, minat on dance and then plus dia boleh edit uh, boleh create video So, uh, I invite, okay, dia interested untuk join garis sebab dia ada speciality on that. So, kita orang uh, welcoming and then uh, get uh, a platform untuk dia explore more on visual. I see, I see. Seems like, uh, I rasa salah ni, dia kan, dia dah blend you punya kerja dengan you punya life tu kan, dia agak, agak satu tau. Sometimes you buat, um, I see you sometimes you buat, uh, apa dia, um, charity work kan, you buat ambil gambar-gambar mm. yang record the old building architecture kan, mm. the kan, it's, mm. it's, a, it's a charity work and then santai nampak you pun contribute dekat apa, semua pen punya event ataupun yang apa, yeah. uh, NAB punya event kan, I mean seems like uh, yeah. kan, it's not really about money right, it's more like uh, yeah. right? But, and then for your nah, information, kamu, audience money kan, come later lah <laughs> <laughs> And then for your information kan, Salam dia dia banyak tu, dia ada buat channel pasal some similar macam ni, macam beyond professional practice ni kan. Dia dah ada banyak sesi kan, dia sudah banyak interview orang-orang yang uh, kerja beyond architecture punya field. Uh, I, I, a lot lah, I mean some of them adalah macam an, a stage designer, some of them become a, a contractor, whatever. Dia dah, uh, tapi kali ni this is the first time yang kita invite, I mean, Interview orang dia sendiri lah. The host itu lah. We interview the host tu. Normally dia yang hosting. Okay, uh, last but not least, I, I nak tanya juga yang Steven, uh, Steven juga. Steven, how I know uh, you are keen to become an entrepreneur, right? I mean, you are keen to become a businessman. But how can you, why you want to choose a construction field? Is that it? Why? Eh? Uh, because the study, we, well, our study is very related to construction. I see. So this is the first choice of me. I see. And so also a... my 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 school my uh, lecturers actually is building a alumni group. Ah. We're sharing every information in our QS alumni, even uh for the you want to go employ employment oh. or self employment. Actually, that alumni group is very helpful. I see. I see. So basically, you are uh even before you graduate, you are more. Less, uh, you more or less, you know that is the thing you want to go, right? Yeah. I see, okay. Okay, uh, another question, another question here. Did I miss anything? I think after Salam should be uh, Zalika, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lah, no wonder. I, 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 I'm not tahu apa cerita dia. Ini sangat penting. Just come back, come back. Zalika, Zalika, I'll share your story. Why you choose this? Oh, yeah, why I, I choose this? Uh, like I mentioned just now, uh, I didn't really have a choice because susah cari kerja. I memang nak jadi architect because uh, I okay je nak jadi architect but uh, tak ada rezeki kan? So, I, uh, with the knowledge I have to, I started as visual and I didn't want to do, uh, like I said, I had a five-year plan. Uh, macam, so, I started as a fashion boutique dulu and then I become a spoke. You You have to be able to cope in different uh, pressures, different situations. You can, you can a professional lah. You can a professional. Professionally, tak smart. So, nya bukan lah. Oh, you doctor, you professional. You lawyer, you professional. You, you architect, you professional. Orang lain tak professional. It's not, it's not that. It's an attitude that you, you bring uh, to the workplace. So, uh, this is how I choose to to you know, treat my qualification, I'm going to be professional about it, okay, tak dapat kerja dan architecture, tak apa, tak ada rezeki, so let's start class visuals yang bahan. So, memang I choose uh, uh, leather coat, so um, maybe senang cerita, I suka handbag, habis cerita. <laughs> I suka perempuan kan? 
<laughs> so suka handbag uh, and then uh, I tak ada duit nak start fashion business tudung ke business baju ke tu semua makan banyak sangat duit like berat atau ribu tapi nak start business handbag ni dia lebih kepada technical you kena macam AutoCAD apa apa macam drawing semualah kan photoshop semua so dia lebih technical and I, a very small uh, model So obviously also another reason is actually I'm a privileged child. I have um, well off parents. Uh, so I'm exposed to this this world of luxury goods. The concept as visual, maybe baru dekat Malaysia, tapi negara first world or kaya macam Dubai, Singapore, New York, semua ada banyak tas bijou. Ada banyak. Ramai orang yang dia jadi leather product specialist tu ada pekerjaan yang satu, yang normal, a normal job in um Western countries or rich countries, it's a normal job, as normal as a dentist clinic. It's very normal. So, so yeah, so that's how I decided to explore this job. I see. It's because uh, hmm. yeah, le- leather wear is really kind. This is a new field that came to me, right? I I just realized you just now you say uh, that hmm. they don't go through the design process, kind. Like what the concept is, kind. They are like exactly yes. like design uh, yes. architecture, kind, building, kind. But it's a it's a smaller thing. Yeah, yeah. And then you're It's using... a subgroup in industrial design. I see. You are using AutoCAD. Mm, subgroup in industrial design. Juga. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, but 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 cuma kita macam kita a uh, small scale company. Kita bukan manufacturer yang mass. So we do a lot of uh, manual job like drawing. Yeah, still do manual. But uh, kalau bigger companies, yes, they do AutoCAD and all. 3D semua, Rhino semua dia pakai. But smaller company like mine, we do uh, manual macam year one punya kerja, lukis dengan tangan lagi. I see. So after lukis hmm. tu, siapa yang kunting tu? I mean, you sendiri yang jahit kan? Oh. Uh, we have our partnering, uh, we have our partnering craftsmen. I deal with a lot of craftsmen uh, in Italy and Europe, other parts of Europe. So all the designs here, kita dah draw and everything, and kita manufacture in Europe. Which is why I did my apprenticeship semua dekat Italy. All the leather semua I beli kat Italy and I jahit sana everything and then they send it back to Kuala Lumpur here and I uh, pass to my clients lah. I see, I see. Okay, kind of mm. interesting. Uh, it's uh, something new. Okay, the next question I would like to know actually. Uh, um, what kind of, uh, just now you, you all of you mentioned about a little bit of this, uh, the struggles, right? Uh, maybe it's a mental, mental struggles again. Uh, whether you are, how you want to change kan? Do you face any kind of uh, beside personal when your struggles? I feel like these struggles yeah, you face uh, uh, is it parents when you're resistant or did you face anything that, other than self doubt of this kind of thing? Ada lagi tak? Uh, salam sana ada ke? Uh, for sure lah ada sebab so even uh, our parents pun okay you masuk on architecture you kena keluar jadi architect. So that the that uh, our bank orang punya thought ah. So for those yang happen this is normal because uh, parent dia nak the best for us. So that's why dia nak kita jadi someone. So but how how you you apa ni? Uh, you explain to them. So for for me for part one so I settle first my part one. So and then uh, during that time I still lagi uh, on architecture punya farm that's why I enter on uh, as 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 and then after uh, I continue continue my study for part two so that during that time uh, so one one uh, <coughs> important thing about part two ni because I want to challenge myself lah sebab every time part two orang kata kat susah every time part two orang kata kat susah gila so that's the the main uh, so i enter uh, part two and then during that time i discuss with my parent and then uh, my late dad i said okay okay if you want to uh, be a, a have your own company uh, be a photographer okay buat betul-betul so uh, and then share uh, rezeki to everyone for those yang ada uh, in uh, your team even though uh, not uh, in your team that's why uh, kalau you tengok so banyak dari pixel ni kita contribute back to community, contribute back to student during architecture workshop. So that's uh, my lab that punya pesanan lah. That's why I uh, take uh, dia <coughs> dia nasihat tu. So for garis pixel, uh, kalau you cakap memang from uh, parent memang ada from my mom. So that how how you 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 tunjukkan your 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 passion. So you kena bersungguh-sungguh. So and then after that, baru dia akan nampak, okay, you are be serious. 
So my my mum pun dah okay, uh, now pun dah oh, okay. Salam fotografer, uh, architecture fotografer. So I still lagi uh, on field uh, in architecture. So on parent memang on on our circle pun sama. So that's uh, banyak benda lah you kena facing because you orang kata dekat macam rebel sikit lah sebab you tak nak you bukan uh, keluar as what uh, you supposed to be so you keluar as uh, others so biasa tu standard uh, so memang itu benda yang memang you guys akan facing lah but uh, make sure uh, photos yang nak buat tu settlekan dulu so jangan macam okay dah second year eh, I, I nak buat business lah so settlekan, settlekan at least you have the degree at least you have something so for those yang you nak keluar as qualified So and then after that you add on your 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 passion add on your your specialty so that you be a different person. I see. Sekarang your parents is ah uh, salam nine new step lagi. <laughs> 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 no more question ah. Dia memang proud of you. Tak ada more question ah. Para bayang Zalika, Zalika do you face any uh, maybe uh, any 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 issue I mean uh, maybe it's a self doubt thing ataupun whatever ataupun any kind of uh, any kind of pressure ataupun resistance you face throughout this uh, throughout this uh, five years yeah uh, definitely uh when i first started because my dad they consultant engineer ir and they he's like a very highly skilled ir dia banyak dah ir ni dia banyak lagi skill so he memang expect i get er <laughs> you know yeah the way i get er and then and then dia punya friends semua AR kita yang kita punya ni lah senior principal sekarang lah Aki dia, Aki Tech so semua dia punya gang oh, oh, so, that's why masa I, uh, so I part 1 and then part 2 tu I nak buat lain kan, nak buat graphic design ke lansik lepas tu dia kata no 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 uh, kau Naya yang Aki ni kata ambil part 2 <laughs> so I have no chance and then, dia tahu I'm good at studying kan I will okay lah, turut je lah, turut okay but, but just, just make the dad happy And then after dah graduate tu kan tak dapat kerja kan dia yang paling susah hati tu macam kesian lah anak aku kesian lah kan <laughs> tapi tapi tak apalah kan ada uh, okay je and then um, and then masa start company tu biasalah biasalah semua orang macam doubt uh, still doubting still getting doubted and then uh, masalah business tu uh, every year ada the first 10 years of your business tu 10 tahun pertama ya memang kan so, you know it's going to be really bad ups and down, uh, nak dekat bankrupt tapi tak bankrupt <laughs> so tu semua normal normal. that's why you have to prepare yourself mentally uh, maturely uh, and like Salam cakap tadi kena belajar habis, belajar kena habis, kalau tak habis uh, part tu pun tak apa, habiskan part one and then I you know take professional certificates ke apa ke to really prepare yourself to do a business course business ni dia tak ajar dalam architecture punya course so you kena uh, go for courses yang under uh, banks ke under uh, MARA ke ada, ada courses yang entrepreneurship so you have to prepare yourself so insyaAllah after that you can you can go through, I mean semua orang pun susah, tak ada, tak ada siapa yang tak susah those who made it out are the ones yang memang betul-betul terror lah yeah. I see, wow seems like uh, Zalika you have a huge parents punya tu kan bayang-bayang tu kan, memang uh, <laughs> lagi susah lah nak convince mereka kan <laughs> yeah, uh, what about your uh, seven thing, seven thing do you feel that you have any uh, any kind of uh, uh, struggles i mean beside the technical things uh, any, any other things yeah for for the first thing of course come from family family mm. will adopting you cannot because you're too young for me my man that time is too young okay. and then my time to uh want to be a, uh, a boss uh, that time starting, you are only 22 21 22 22 <laughs> 21 like something like that okay uh the, the moment uh parent my man said uh don't do this uh, you go work lah uh, Mm. You don't try yourself to be put yourself in the fire, lah. Something like that. Okay. But actually, another the most trouble things, ah, my my facing challenging is when you moment to talk to the client. You're that young. Oh yeah, lah, yeah, lah. So I, I have this problem as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, most okay. of the initial uh, start of the my business, ah, I've been rejected and rejected for the reason you're too young. Okay. Okay. So so you're giving the people that. The image that cannot be reliable. Oh, uh, because young. you are you don't have portfolio somewhere, right? Yeah, in the yeah, yeah. Beginning. yeah. 
So how you overcome this? I mean, uh, this? actually, by the by the way that I talk, by the oh. way I understand the technology things and then the technical part things. Uh, and also, actually, I think uh, Jalika just now mentioned about bankruptcy. Ah. In 2017, actually, I'm facing the bankruptcy. Almost. Not almost. Yes. yes. Already. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, already but it's right. overcome already. To this overcome. Hey, is that e very easy to overcome that? Uh, Clear off. He, Clear off the debt. It will give you a turn. Uh, when the more, it's the good, bad things. Uh, most of the people were having facing this. It's give you a turn. Six months. If you can uh, overcome this, this uh, requirement, then you will get back to the normal. Can you make it in six months? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. In six months. So, actually, the construction, 10 people go in this field, uh, only left two people is survive and struggle. I mean, the rest is not making money. Yeah? The rest is not making money and then it's losing the money. Okay, okay. Um, okay, look, my perspective, uh, our professional perspective, we always say that um, professional, we earn just uh, that little piece, uh, uh, kacang low. we earn this uh, consultant fee. The rest needs more developer and then contractor yang, yang, yang kaya lah. Is, is that true? It's not true, is it? Uh, it can be true, but mostly not true. Okay. But you're going to be very good in managing your cash flows, model, uh, your decision making. A good contractor, actually, for my understanding, okay. is how you use the less money to do a big job. How to oh. manage the risk. Every okay. construct is a risk. Okay. No matter big or small. But how we uh, use the, like this, this thing have to be done in one million. Mm. But how you can do it in a half million can be. Can it can, be. Is it possible? Yeah? Possible. Can be. Because you've done some project in the previous one. So you have this material, material, actually it's the wastage. It's material. Uh, actually it's the wastage of previous. One. And also how you manage to cut costs of your labor costs, of oh, machinery okay. costs, like this. I see, I see. Totally different field, I would say. Which I'm not familiar with also. Well, he's uh, such a young guy. <laughs> go through the bankruptcy and go out again. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> my, my. <laughs> okay. Satu uh, lagi. I think uh, we are almost to the end of our our Borak Santai session. Tapi, I, um, I, I hope uh, it's, how to say, Cash flow, I mean, uh, advice. I, I, uh, is there any possibility? You uh, don't advice to the students. Last piece of advice before we close up our, our, our broad session. Uh, it's more like, uh, uh, especially yeah, for those who are 50 50 50, kan, na, na, na jadi professional, kan, na keluar, kan, kalau na keluar, na apa apa, kan, macam mana nak plan di future, kan, five year plan yang anda lihat just now, kan. Uh, what, what, what kind of thing they need, they need to be prepared, I would say. Okay, can we start with uh, uh, Salam first? Okay, alright. So first, uh, first thing first, you guys kena tahu what you guys nak buat apa. It's like that the first thing lah. So you guys tahu, so what you are facing, you are can facing, so you be prepared. Yang kedua, uh, okay, macam you guys tengok from Garden Special. Garden Special just bukan from my part only. So I ada my best partner. So we start our, uh, during during study lagi, kita dah tengok tu, okay. My partner ni, okay, dia, kita meet each other. So, from my part, macam my part, more on PR, more kepada depan. Sebab selalunya on business, dia akan ada dua. Satu yang akan ada depan, satu yang ada kat belakang. So, that's that's normal. So, dia tak boleh berjalan untuk satu kaki je. So, for Gary Fisher, I have a wonderful uh, partner, uh, Fidoz Ahmad. So, dia doing all the the technical part. So, I'm doing my my part lah. So, for those yang, uh, even dalam business pun, you akan tahu. So, if you want to go fast, you akan jalan seorang. Tapi, but, you, if you want to go further, uh, you have your own team. So, apa tu, uh, for my my part, kalau you guys tengok on Gary Pixel sendiri, uh, everyone has their, their, their speciality, their part. Uh, uh, my partner, so their technical part. So macam uh, I I said before, Zenko they have a specialist on uh, video editing, uh, Zakiman on architecturally. So everything about architecture semua ada dalam kepala dia. So that's the speciality yang kita ada. So uh, for that's why uh, I mentioned before uh, try to create expand your circle, expand your circle. Sebab kita tak tahu you 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 facing apa lepas ni. 
So one of the best uh, thing you guys can uh, expand your circle uh, architecture workshop lah. So that's the best lah. And even I dah cakap tadi, my my crew everything from architecture workshop. So that's my advice lah. That supaya every time you go, you have a, a apa ni? Uh, satu strong team and then yang kedua you have macam tadi lah kalau you you nak uh, go further uh, make sure you have your uh, best partner uh, macam Zalika dia ada partner uh, with the husband so macam mine uh, has partner with Vida Samet and also my crew so that's my advice lah expand your your circle uh, explore more on your passion alright Okay, okay. Thank you, Salam, for your very wise advice. I think because uh, you are talking based on your experience, right? It's uh, very reliable. Uh, next, uh, uh, Miss uh, Zalik. Zalika. Um, okay. Uh, like I said just now, nanti after graduate, uh, if you're worried if whether you want to become an architect or not, like I said lah, try, try to get into a, a graduate program ke or anything, try to mix around, like like what Salam said, expand your network uh, and I suggest expand beyond architecture punya gang um, so that you may nampak apa orang lain buat professional paper ada macam-macam bukan AR je professional paper ada macam-macam professional paper macam-macam bidang professional paper yang highly paid banyak sangat yang kita tak tahu yang kita tak belajar kat sekolah macam uh, Lean Six Sigma semua ni operations specialties banyak tau yang boleh you apply your architecture qualification into that so if if you can try to get into a graduate program macam Shell graduate program ke Petronas ke try lah banyak ada banyak company yang MERS yang ada graduate program if you if you tak boleh then try to get a, a junior position at an oil and gas company ke any lah any big MNC from there you will mix with people from different background and from there I think you can find out actually what you want to do oh actually I'm good at you know operations oh actually I'm good at at managing customer customer you know customer service It's a specialist and they're, they're where, you know, well paid. <laughs> customer service dia. Kita dengar macam, oh, customer service, whatever. Oh, no. Customer service kat MNC is different. Ah, different level. Dia bukan customer service yang telefon itu lain. So, this is why I say you can expose dengan diri you kepada orang dari profession lain. And then, sebab so, kan, macam Salam cakap kan, uh, you find out lah apa you nak buat. Tapi, to find out tu, you can uh, ada strategi. Uh, strategi dia, ialah, janganlah spend one year do do nothing. Uh, you you kena okay dah graduate esok juga apply kerja apply internship apply whatever and then you duduk dekat dalam position tu for about one year and then from there you find out what you're good at uh, maybe banyak tau specialize specialization and then uh, dari situ you can plan your five year plan your five year plan nak start business ke nak cari partner ke apa ke tapi yang penting you exposekan diri you dulu yeah Yeah, so your keyword is the, the exposure itu kena ada dulu kan? Yeah, yeah. Especially you know what? Uh, we are now you stay in in Sarawak, no? Sarawak in, in the central region of Sarawak. So sometimes uh, exposure itu kita ada lacking. Like, so uh, this is a very wise advice, and then uh, I hope students can receive and then uh, they 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 will digest lah. Uh, this is uh, your suggestion. No? And then lastly, uh, our uh, seventh thing. What is your advice to this uh, to the audience, no? especially the students? Uh, in your future why, why is there there uh, i think study is still very important to uh before he getting to the society it's a uh, kind of shaping uh, communication network in this moment of study give a lot of uh, uh like like we like my 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 always scan with engineers, <coughs> architecture friends. No matter how 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 far you go, you still need that this friend network because they might be the CEO of some company. There might be some QS, chief QS of some company. So this network helping you a lot. Uh, and also our UCTS actually uh, grouping ours, uh, these alumni together. Sharing every information, how we go to the employment, and then this and that mm -hmm. for the our dispatch of students. Okay, okay, 
Okay, with that, I think uh, it's come to the end of this of our uh, Borak Sante sessions. Uh, I thank you very much, every uh, speaker, to spend your whole uh, precious morning with us and then to give us uh, a, a very wonderful uh, presentation. And last but not least, I also want to thank our uh, behind screen senior technician. You know, we have few technicians, they are doing a few rounds of rehearsal. Uh, you can see the logo, logo, UCS, the person you have the running hack model are all done by them. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't, uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, the audience right now, don't like, um, don't forget to like and subscribe our channels. So with that, uh, we end our uh, Borak Santai session for this morning, shall we? Thank you yes, very much. Thank you. Can we have a group photo? Uh, we'll have a <laughs> group photo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I put okay. Snap, lah. Snap, snap. Ah, then that's snap. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Bye. Bye.